Okay, so now that you've seen Roku and the chart, no, and you see that uh, parang mas malakas siya, would that change your perception about Netflix? Or are you still going to? Um, maybe I'll say my stand after like getting to know Roku, like aside from reading the chart itself. Uh, guys, camera please. Because I actually want to ask questions to those people that I haven't heard from in, in the previous videos. So I want to focus on you guys. Because I know the usual suspects. Eh. Yeah, so like Alvin, si Marco. Diba? I know them already. Even, even Abe has asked several questions. But those who haven't really asking questions, I want, I want to see your faces. I mean, if you have access to cameras, si Pierre, Luigi, uh, Hazel na lang, Jethro, I want to see your, I want to see your cameras on. Please. Okay na ba tayo? Are we good to go? Um, uh, yeah, okay na. Oh, sige, sige, sige. Oh, sige, sige. Brief, brief survey no, before, before we, we get to the actual presentation. No? Who here uh, loves to gamble? Who here loves to gamble? Thumbs up or like whatever. Like put, type, type it in the chat. I just want to see who here loves to gamble. So I see Harold. Who else? Who here doesn't like gambling? Oh, sige. Who here doesn't like gambling? Balik tayo natin. Who? Who? Eh, Kobe. Wow. No one, no one likes gambling. So okay, let me ask Harold. Harold, why do you like gambling? Um, the reward that comes with it. Okay. And you thrill, I guess. Uh, what, what, uh, what do you gamble on? Um... Actually, I don't gamble a lot then. Naman. Actually, I would say na what I was doing in stocks was actually gambling in a sense. Because mm -hmm. like, drawing down ng lines and sabi ko, ayan, support and resistance. And then, hit, pindot na agad. And without actually knowing parang if tama ba yung ginagawa ko. So, yeah. Okay. Good. Sige. Uh, sino yung mga ayaw mag-gamble? I guess I assume everyone everyone else, you know, say only Harold loves to gamble. Marpa ba iba? Who else who else loves gambling? No more? Oh sin I'll I'll just ask a random person. Ah. Kyle. Yeah. Hello. But I won't mag sugal. Uh dati kasi, I used to gamble in stocks too, but I noticed na hindi consistent your returns. Sometimes I win big. Sometimes I lose big. Pero Sometimes I still gamble, pero not on stuff like basketball games with friends. Hmm. Pero generally, I don't like it anymore. I like, I, I do it for the thrill lang. Hmm. Okay. Yung iba ba dahil nasunog kayo? Did you gamble on, did you bet on anything that, that nag, nagtaya ba kayo sa crypto or something? Or like, do you, do you play the odds of basketball? Huh? Were you nasunog ba kayo? Okay, sige. Why did I ask that? Okay, so this is just my opinion and maybe kind of heretical. Buti wala pa si boss, no? Kasi he might reprimand me. But in my opinion, ha, in my opinion only, I think good gamblers turn out to be the best traders. Okay? So, but again, ha, emphasis on good gamblers. Ha. Why do you say good gamblers? Maybe yung Harold, for, for the thrill, that's, that's, that's different. Okay, what, who are the good gamblers? Good gamblers play the odds. Okay, only, only bet when the odds are in their favor. When the, prob when the probability of making money is high. Okay, so that's... And, ano opposite of a gambler? So yeah, what's the, op what's the opposite of a gambler? Can can anyone like make a guess lang naman? Ah, wala rin naman tamang sagot eh. I mean, it's just my opinion din eh. So, what's the opposite? Yeah, trading is anything in life naman. Anything there's no certainty is gambling eh. Di ba? When you make a decision, oh, sinabi ko na eh. Opposite of ga of a gamblers. For a lack of a better word, sigurista. Ano ba English na sigurista? Perfectionist? You know what I mean? 
Di ba? If if you're that type of person, mahirapan ka magpindot. Yun yung gusto ko sinabi ni Harold. Di ba? Like, uh, even if the whole picture isn't complete yet, pipindot na. Di ba? Kasi if if you're the type of person, I'm not I'm not ano, encouraging gamb as in pure gambling. Kasi that's that's not the right way, of course. It, like a bad gambler is like you go all in, de ba? Basta may chance of making money, you go you bet on it, de ba? I mean, sorry, but the lotto betters are not good gamblers. Kasi the odds of making money is lotto is sobrang sama. Diba? So if you're if you're playing lotto, that's really for wala lang, feel lang talaga, di ba? That's so where am I going? Ah, okay, yun. So if if a good gambler and a good trader executes even if there's no, if, even if the the information isn't complete yet. Okay, so it's in my experience then. In my experience, um, the easiest to train. The easiest traders to train are those people who won't hesitate. Diba? So I'm not saying that uh, feeling ko marami sa iyo ayaw lang mag-admit eh, diba? But probably like I think half of the floor uh, loves gambling. <laughs> but uh, I'm just saying na, na it's it's probably going to be easier to train those who uh, don't hesitate. No? Persist na mga, oh I, I need this to be complete. I need this uh the information to be perfect before 100% sure before i make a decision diba? it might take a bit longer okay so tinakot ko na ba kayo wait lang ha. let me share my presentation um, i think it's this one uh, guys let's let's make this uh, a bit casual ha, kasi um nga, I, I watched all the videos the past two weeks Everything is there already. Eh. So, uh, to be honest, when I when I uh, started making this presentation, parang po tuturo ko, parang everything is was given already, no. Lalo na si boss, si boss complete. Diba? Okay, so Okay, so just 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 uh, transitioning to to what I, I said about gambling, no. So, good gamblers uh they don't need So, think of Think of uh, trading them as like um, putting pieces together no? to see uh, whether you can execute or not. Top 15 boss. Si boss, si boss. Hi, boss. Thank you. Ah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Of course, of course. So I was just saying, boss, na hindi ko na alam tuturo ko ngayon kasi tinuro mo na lahat. Eh. So, <laughs> <laughs> So, so today I'll just try to uh, like focus on those na I think we need some refinements no? yeah. okay, so going back no so a good gambler or a good trader the best traders don't need to see the whole picture before pressing that button before clicking that mouse button now when when they see that the odds or the probability of making money is already decent or already high Execute na yan without question. Diba? But then when you're when you're doing a puzzle, I'm sure I'm sure most of you do puzzles din naman eh, diba? Kailangan may counting ano kay, like those pieces should be familiar to you eh. Diba? In order to complete it. Right? So that's uh, what we've been doing then the past few weeks eh. Learning training your eyes, training your minds to see the different um the different things that you need in order to to press that button you know, to trade to execute you no know? okay so in a way in a way you can say that's the fpsr framework eh? right so uh this this presentation should be about my general process and execution and this is just what i use about this framework i i mix i use this framework in order to help me determine whether the probabilities are already in my favor before I even execute, Because the thing now is um, the thing with, with with the technology that we have, the internet, diba? all all the tools that we have, parang sobrang dami naman. Diba? You go to YouTube, there there are a million videos about trading, 
Diba? You, you type something in Google, sobrang dami about trading. I mean, you, if, if that's what you want, you don't need us anymore. Diba? But what, what we're trying to do here is for you to be able to focus diba? on those that really, those, um, uh, call this, those concepts that, that really matter. And dami kasing noise. Eh. Diba? And, and I think all the all the 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 mentors, the coaches, all that have that have spoken already have done a great job in 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 yun nga, pointing out what what really matters in trading. No? So let me just go through each one now, no? And and try to share my my experiences then, my opinion on each one about what what I use then. No? Guys, again, let's let's make it this casual. If you have any questions, no, just just just. You don't need to raise your hand. Just say excuse me, then then ask the question. But I want to hear from those that I haven't heard from <laughs> primarily, because because I, I want to know you guys. No, uh, like sabi ko yung mawala pa dito si Alvin kilalang kilala ko na si Kobe kilala ko na si Margo kilala ko na kasi they ask a lot of questions. Eh. Okay, so those who uh, who haven't really asked any questions yet, these two just just uh, magsalita lang kayo, no. Okay, Mahia, you can you can ask in English, in Filipino, or whatever in Taglish. No? So let's make this a bit casual. Okay, so what do I look for in fundamentals? No, so I think fundamentals, like sino ba yung sino ba yung nandito kanina na yung sabi hindi magaling sa fundamentals? Was that Harold? Ko yun know, Harold? Ay, Adrian ba? Adrian? Sino ba yung sabi? Gab. Yun yeah, yun? I think it was me. Fundamentals, <laughs> no. Well, personally, ako rin naman, di ako magaling sa fundamentals. Eh, no? I failed level 3 in, in CFA. So, di, di ko na tinaloy after that. Kasi, hirap eh. No? So, but, again, that's me. Diba? I mean, I know I know my strengths, I know my weaknesses, I know that fundamentals may be one of my weaker points. No? So, what I do, I rely on other people. I'm sure I'm sure boss is, is the same way. Diba? I mean, when pag nagtuturo siya, Palagi siya nagkukwento about April, the research team, because he knows how to utilize other people's strengths. And that's also one, one thing that I've learned from him. I mean, you don't have to force yourself. Of course, you need understanding. But I mean, if it's not your inclination, if you don't, if it's not your cup of tea talaga, you're, you're having a difficult time understanding it, then rely on other people that, that, that can help you out. That's why also this community is is very important. No? Okay. So going back, fundamental. So what do I look for lang? Diba? Very simple. I just, I think fundamental is really just to set expectations. Eh, diba? So the degrees of movement. Diba? Paulit-ulit na rin tayo dito. The 45 degree companies, 60 degree companies, the 90 degree companies. Once you figure out how to classify those companies, that's already half the battle. Okay. So again, what are 45 degree companies? Can can someone refresh the floor? Uh, I want to hear from maybe Jethro. Yan. Hi. Hi, okay, Jethro. Um, yep. Uh, yeah, from my understanding, 45 degree companies are um, the established companies. Na. Mm, like yeah. we already know their business model. Uh, uh, they're not as high growth as the 60 degree companies but then uh, we still expect them to grow at a substantial a sustainable rate yeah correct that's, that's primarily it diba? I mean 45 degree companies are your Star Wars so you yeah. so four piece diba? I mean you're finding the next Starbucks nandun na lahat yan okay the ironic thing is parang I guess in college gandun yung problema eh, diba? you only look for these companies the stable ones, the perfect companies, those who make uh, earn, uh, who consistently give out dividends, diba? Sobrang perfect record, like yung mga Microsoft mo, Apple, diba? They every, year in and year out, stable earnings nila. There may be some some misses, but stable stable growth, yeah, diba? Even during economic crisis, diba? But the irony there is, though your risk may be small. Your upside is also limited. Diba? Kasi ang nangyayari, 
alam na ng lahat eh. Diba? So there's nothing to to predict anymore. Like you know that ang nangyayari, yun nga, nakalagay ito, these, these companies move in channels. Diba? Why do they move in channels? They just wait for the next earnings report. Diba? They just wait for, uh, okay, nandito na siya sa target na to, but for sure next next year, mag-grow na naman yan eh. Diba? So hinihintay lang ng mga, hinihintay lang ng mga funds yan. Diba? So, that's that's the irony there no so baka yung yung so yung galaw nito ang expectation in in these companies are quite low na diba of course upside is still very good diba i mean relatively but hindi siya kasing lakas ng next ones no so okay so before i move on to the 60 degree companies 45 degree companies the setups you use mostly duration major duration patterns no so yung mga uh, tinuro nila Rome and Peter. Alala niyo ba 'yon? Before before Brian nagturo si Rome and Peter, they taught you uh, magnitude and duration. Why do I see shock faces? Did you study magnitude and duration? Thumbs up if yes. No? Nako, kailangan ko kusapin si Rome. <laughs> okay, so so your 45 degree companies, they're the ideal setups for for them are these. So reverses, resets, coils, flat and falling coils, and in some cases capitulation in Philippines. No, so so what happened uh, in 2020 in the Philippines? That was a capitulation in March. No. That's the only exception when ang laki ng upside mo for these companies. Diba? Kasi because um, the Philippine market is so illiquid, it leads to irrationality. Diba? Irrationality meaning ang laki ng, ang laki ng uh, overshoot sa value. Diba? So when, when price overshoots value by so much, ang laki na opportunity for, for these 45 degree companies. Kasi typically, ang late lang nga ng discrepancy, di ba? Ang late lang na mispricing. But in a crisis, in like COVID crisis, ang laki ng discrepancy mo. So even the mga Ayala Land, even the BDO, JFC, those stalwarts that typically in the previous years only give you, what, 10% a year? Biglang parang double, triple. Di ba? So, that's the only time you use capitulation in these companies. Pag crisis driven. Okay? Otherwise, you just wait for the consolidation patterns. Okay? Now, 60D companies. Uh, sige, refresh me. Uh, who else haven't I heard from? Russell. Russell Cody. What are 60 degree companies? Um, six degree companies are the ones that have aggressive growth. So usually they're still young. What else? Um. Mm. I mean, don't don't be afraid to to. Uh, kamo sa growth rates nila. Um. Siguro since 60 degrees, so, so very high siguro in the range of mga triple digit growth rates. Or... Yeah. Yeah, at, at least 15 to 20% growth yan, diba? even more. Right? I, I top line and bot, top line. Diba? But bottom line, these companies, yung iba dyan, hindi pa kumikita. Diba? Or negligible earnings pa. Diba? So, well, the company CTS usually focuses on on these companies, so we we primarily focus in, in these in the US. So what are the applicable setups in sixty degree companies? So you have your resets as well, your coils, but ideally, talaga pullbacks and momentum. Okay, can anyone guess why? Why pagdating sa resets, major duration patterns, medyo high risk of failure na siya. Can anyone make a guess? Anyone? 
sige, let me ask Luigi. I joke. Uh, who haven't I heard from? Tristan. I see. Uh, sir, what do you mean by surprises? Hmm? What do you mean by surprises, sir? I said, may, may sinabi mo what surprises. But, but yes, <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the answer. No? Uh, is these companies, they're priced to perfection. Okay, when they're priced to perfection, any, any type of mess or ano, laki ng sell off them. Diba? So and when they go through consolidate huge consolidation patterns like resets, means and 50-50 na yan, medyo low. Again, again, going back to my earlier point. So we're just trying to make sure that the probability of making money is, is high. No? Now, pagdating sa 60D companies na nag reset sila, automatically yung probability of making money in these 60 degree companies medyo mababa. Pwede pa rin pero medyo mababa. Okay kasi posible na dahil nag-reset siya, that it went all the way down to 100 or 200 day EMA, baka priced in tapos na yung story. No? Okay? So similar to 45 degree companies, you don't really buy masyado mga momentum and pullbacks in 60 degree companies. Unless it's a market-driven, meaning lahat, yun yung nangyari. Market-driven meaning the whole market uh, corrected. Like the, what happened the past three months. Okay lang. But if it's like uh, normal bull market, di ba? malakas yung market, tapos yung 60-day company mo nag-sell off all the way to the 200-day, hindi na yan maganda. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll show you more examples later or we can even look at uh, uh, more examples after, after the session. Okay, so again, 60 degree companies, what you focus on, what setups you focus on are reset, not, re not primarily pullbacks and momentum, but can also be resets and cords. But resets, medyo low probability na yan. Okay, next, 90 degree companies which are probably your favorite companies, no? Mga speculative and mga, mga basura, basura companies, no? especially for probably Harold, no? Tama ba? Ito yung mga gusto mo. Okay, sige, Harold, what are, what are these companies? Um, as mentioned, no numbers yet. And as um, Boss would like to say, these are more narrative-driven stocks as compared to numbers. Nga. Yes. Uh, so, uh, not even top line, minsan wala pa yan. No, bottom line, wala talaga. So, it's all narrative driven. Right? Okay, so what are the setups you use in, in these companies? Just momentum and at most pullbacks. Okay? Pag nag malalim na, ko, na, na reset yan, pag nag range, to, pag nag 50 day yan, trap na yan. So, big probability that's already a trap. So your 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 odds of making money even if it's just a normal pullback pero nasa 50 day na siya automatically your odds of making money are small. Okay? So you get where I'm 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 what I'm trying to explain here, no? So in a way I'm say what I'm saying is your expectations for the company, what type, comp what type of company it is, should match your setup. You get me? So let's say, let's say yung BDO, no? 45 degree company siya. Correct? Correct? Does anyone disagree with me? <laughs> Meron ba? 45 degree company ang BDO. Pag nag-momentum yan, tingin nyo mataas ang probability of making money? Pag na momentum setup. Yes or no? No. Okay? Kasi again, yung upside niyan, maliit, hindi, hindi ganun kalaki. Diba? So pag mag-momentum yan, there has to be a huge unexpected reason behind its move. Otherwise, the probability of making money in it 
is very small. Okay? So, I mean, it's still a valid setup. Let's say, mga BDO nag boom. You guys know what boomers are? Mga momentum setups. Right? Tinuro ni, tinuro ni Rome yan. Diba? So, pag ang 45 degree company mo, nag boomer or nag momentum setup, it's still a valid setup. But is it aligned with our expectations with the company? Probably not. Diba? Okay. Okay, let's move on. So let, let, let me just show you this spectrum. I'm not sure if you've seen this this um, this chart before. No. So obviously the range of expectations as you uh, move towards the more speculative companies become larger. Okay. So in a way, this is also your risk reward. Eh? So the the higher the reward, right? The risk is probably higher as well. Okay? But as traders, I assume all of you want to, want to be traders or most of you want to be traders, diba? What's our biggest advantage? Well, just looking at this spectrum. Can anyone answer? What's our biggest advantage? Or one of our biggest advantages? Alvin, sige. I know, I know you want to uh, speak your mind. Come on, help, help, help us out. Sorry, sir. What's the question? What's the biggest what's advantage? Biggest advantages? Of... What's our what, what's probably our biggest advantage as traders? Just looking at what's... this spectrum and how we can make money off of it. Yeah, I'll probably take advantage of the ninety degree companies because we have a framework, naman, to parang protect ourselves. So we could have a lot of that upside. Yes. And also we can control our risk. Diba? We can take advantage of the upside. No, 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 no problem. Where's my annotation? Right? We can take advantage of uh, of the move. Pag mali, we can cut. Diba? That's that's one of the biggest advantages of, of uh of traders. We don't have to hodl it for life. Yeah, we don't have to hold it until mag zero yan. Diba? We are not investors, we are traders. We can take advantage of the upside while controlling our downside. Diba? So that's one insight that you can um, uh, take from this. No? You know how to... Ayun, sinabi na pala ni Hazel. Tama. I didn't see this. Sorry. I saw it in the chat. But that's correct. Okay? Good. Yeah. Uh, so let's just go through some, some examples. No? So why can't I annotate? Ah. What, what slide can you see, Microsoft? Tama ba? Okay. So, sige. What do, you, what do you guys think of Microsoft? Nandiyan eh, but, but uh, I mean, if, if, does anyone want to, to add? So Microsoft is one of the most stable companies in the US. No? Good dividends, uh, stable growth, margins, very healthy, pero very boring. You know what to expect in Microsoft year in and year out. You don't even have to guess that much anymore. Now, I'm, I'm sure in this in this uh, group, konti lang magsasabi or baka wala pa nagsasabi na hindi to 45 degree company. Correct? So there's very little room for disagreement. Diba? From that alone, you can see, ah, talagang boring, 45 degree company to. Diba? I mean, we all know na ito upside, hanggang dito lang yung risk niya. Diba? More or less, we, yun yung magiging sagot. Eh. Mas consensus tayo. Okay? So, pag ganun, baka maliit na yung upside. So, if you notice, ang best entry points niya, diba? near the 50-day. Kasi channeling up lang siya. Diba? Okay, so yon. So yeah, let me move on to 
sorry can't find the annotation uh, wait lang ha yun hindi pa ako sana yung mag, mag zoom lecture okay so next company is this is supposed to be mali yung nalagay ko this is supposed to be what can you see video pa rin ba Ayan, tama. Video. Okay. So, we um, we touched on this earlier on. No? So, video. 45 degree company. You don't really expect much upside from it. No? Maybe, well, immediate upside. Okay? So, there's a difference. Kasi, kasi if you look at the value in, in COL, calling the shots, baka, baka ang taas ng value eh. Diba? But the, your immediate upside. Diba? What you can make money from in trading may not be that high right, in the short term. Eventually, it might reach that value. Right? Ano ba target ng BDO ngayon? Can, do you guys know? Ano target ng BDO? Can you guys help me? The COL? 140 ba? Or higher? 158, sir. 158, Okay. Do you expect BDO to reach a target right away? No. Diba? It may take some time. Well, but, but the risk of it not reaching that value, baka maliit din. Diba? But making money out of it, like today, diba? pull back siya, baka hindi ganun kalaki. Ang mangyayari, since traders, diba? pag hindi gumagalaw, nagka-cut agad. Diba? Baka ma-shake out ka lang. So this company is really for uh, swing to position traders, meaning your holding holding period much longer. Okay, but if you're planning to momentum trade this, baka ma-shake out ka lang. Diba? So like what I was pertaining to earlier on, diba? it's all about probability of making money right away. No? Okay. Sige. Uh huh. Next, Roku. So, eto na na napag-usapan na rin natin kanina, no? So, you think ang Netflix ano siya? Sixty-three or forty-five degree company? Marco. Sir, yeah. I think it's a sixty because around from here. It's from here, it shows that uh, the earnings are 70% increased. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm talking about Netflix. What do you, what, what's your... Oh, what sorry. You, Netflix. Uh, I think Netflix is already a 45 degree company. Why is that? Um, it was, it's already kind of stabilizing in its earnings. And then um, the... It's not any more new in the market, and most people now are looking at their cash flow instead of like the narrative, so to speak. Okay. Does Does anyone disagree with Marco? Okay. So. Sir, I think measure sixty pa siya. Si si na si na si na Me sir, very. Uh, I'm basing it off the chart lang, because measure it's riding sa twenty m. Sorry, I can't I can't see you in in the in the video. Who's talking? Sorry. Tristan, sir. Tristan. Tristan, Tristan. Okay, 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 okay. Again, again. Sorry. Uh, I'm basing it off the chart long, sir, because hmm. it's riding off the 20M recently. Pero baka it's because of the tech boom lang ng 2020. Okay. Netflix, no? Yes. Okay. okay. I mean, I would personally I would classify it mga 45 to 60. No, but it's it's going towards that 45 degree expectation for me as well. Diba? Kasi wala na siya mas stable na na corner na niya most of the US market. Right? Slowly, slowly uh, gaining market share or baka na corner na rin yung other countries. Eh. Diba? So what's more to, to, to expect from Netflix? Diba? I mean, yung next, yung next move niya is just really growing the pie. 
'di ba? So I think it's probably a little higher than in between 45 to 60 degrees, no. So probably a bit higher than 45 pa, but papunta na doon. Okay, but Roku on the other hand, this is a bit smaller than than Netflix. No, so I would classify it as a 60 degree uh, company, no. So ang ganda nga ng setup niya recently. So this is what you call what type of uh, setup is this? Can any does anyone know? What type of setup is this? Oh, is that a coil? Uh, another answer. Close. Reset. 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 Okay. So a coil, dapat one to two months lang yun eh, right? If it takes longer, that's already a huge reset. Okay, major duration pattern na yan. Okay, so your entry point should be there. Okay, di ba, di ba ito naturo ni Rome? Di ba? Okay, so sinasabi ko kanina, di ba? If it's a 60 degree company, and if it goes through this type of deep correction, sabi ko maliit yung odds of making money. Correct? Sinabi ko yun kanina, di ba? But what happened to the whole market? What happened to the whole market? It corrected as well. Di ba? So, if the whole market corrected this way, okay lang. Your probability of making money in a reset, even if it's a 60D company, is still high. Okay? Uh, if... Again, if you don't, pag medyo malabu pa or something, just ask questions or ask your coaches. No, I'm sure they're they're um, more than capable of answering your questions. Now we we only have ano eh, kasi konti lang yung oras natin. Normally, uh, normally position trading. Okay, nag-message sa si Rome, di na nasama yung reset. No, okay, so just ask your coaches or ask me later. No, but uh. Normally, I teach this one whole session in Kailum. So, three hours in the morning, tas meron pa sa hapon. So, I can't really go linger in, on this too much. No? But the best way of entering resets, okay, in, in uh, quick, quick, ano lang, quick uh, explanation lang. No? So, four to six months, diba? ilan months na yan from the top? One, two, three, four. So, at least, Four months of consolidation, right? A correction to the 200-day EMA. Okay? Then you see... Wait lang ah. Let me change this. You see volatility getting smaller. Yan yung sinasabi na volatility contraction. Okay? So it means that the declines are getting smaller. Okay? From from top to bottom here, ang laki, di ba? Then, paliit na ng paliit. Patayt, it's, the ranges are getting smaller. Okay? So, that's a volatility contraction pattern. Okay? Now, once you have that, okay, ito, naturo ni Peter, sure ako. No? And you can draw a horizontal, uh, Diagonal resistance line, okay, you can enter already at the break of that resistance. Okay, you get it? Yung coil na sinasabi kanina, again, one to two months lang yan. No, probably, ito hindi malinis eh. This one, you see it? You see it? Yung drawing ko? Yan ang coil. So, mabilis lang yan, pero hindi siya ganun kalinis eh. No? Ang reset, ang major duration, takes a long time. Four to six months. Okay? But ito yung malinis na reset, eh, no? Like, bounded by uh, the 50 and the 200-day EMAs. Okay? Alright? Okay. Any questions on resets? I know it's it may be uh, a lot to take in. So again, uh, please ask your coaches. They're still coaching you, right? 
Pag di kayo kinakot, sabihan nyo ako. <laughs> Kinausap pa rin kayo? Nung coaches nyo? Okay, good, good. So you can ask them, again, they're very capable of answering your, your questions. No? But uh, yung resets, um, more up, higher probability for 45 degree companies also can be done for 60 degree companies, especially if the whole market experienced the same kind of correction. Okay? Okay. Okay, sige. Let's move on to the next. Converge. Sino may gusto nito ulit? Ah, si Gab. Converge, no? Oh, Gab, what, what, what do you think of Converge? Why is it a 60 degree company? Um, it's still growing like pretty fast because it's just starting to establish itself as like uh as a competitor for uh globe and pldt okay. so it's still high growth yeah does, does anyone disagree with with uh, gab anyone thinks this is 90 de uh, 90 degree informed speculation How about 45 degree does anyone think this is a 45 degree company Actually, pwede. Diba? But, but more on 60 degrees, uh, in my opinion. No? Um, okay, so I don't think there's much to disagree on here. No? So when you're looking at a 60 degree company, uh, like, like Converge no, in the Philippines, um, what setups should, be, should you be looking at? Ngayon, especially it has broken out already. What setup is that? Momentum. Pull back. Pull backs. Yeah, the, sorry, hindi updated yung chart. Ano na ba mukha? Nang, baka nag-break out na to converge ngayon eh. Ano na pressure niya? <laughs> yeah, but that's a, that's a pullback, no? Let me check. Uh. Converge is now... Ah, nandun pa. Bumalik na pala. Okay, so baka take profit na pala kanina at near 23. Okay? O sige, so uh, as a retail trader in the Philippines, what's what's one of the disadvantages naman? Let's say you're a CUL client. Anyone can answer. O sige, Marco. The transaction costs. Yes, yes, transaction costs. No, so yeah, um, if your risk reward, if your upside is quite low, because your risk mo, uh, hindi rin, I mean, versus your risk, and not that big, your risk reward ratio, baka mas okay pang mag no na lang. No, kasi ito upside mo 23, 23.5 at most, all right, tas yung, yung cut mo 20. 21.5. Right? So baka tumatabla ka pa lang nasa high na siya eh. Di ba? Bibili ka 22.5. <laughs> Di ba? Ayun yung, yun yung problema pag nasa, Filip nasa Philippines ka. No? Transaction costs are really high. Okay? So si boss lang yung kikita sa atin pag, <laughs> pag, pag if you trade a lot in the Philippine market, no? So that's that's the thing with with trading uh ano rin, momentum and and uh, pullbacks in your 45 and 60 degree companies. Right? The transaction costs in the Philippines are so high. Versus in the US, in the US negligible din eh. Correct? So super small like $1 per uh, 100 shares, I think. So very very small. Right? So even if the, the upside may be quite low, okay lang. In the Philippines, pag yung upside mo maliit, wala, talo ka pa lang sa komisyon. No? Uh, kaya mas maganda, if uh, you're trading the Philippine market, and if you're trading 45 and 60 degree companies, you you participate in either uh, coils, resets, no? or mga... 50 day na from mga 45 degree companies ah yung mga 50 day pullbacks or ranges okay yung upside mo medyo malaki pa diba otherwise you'll be playing the 
we should be playing the 90 degree companies na. Kasi at least, upside mo, potentially malaki. But again, as, advant- as our, uh, one of our advantages as traders, we can manage our risk, we can just cut. No? So, Pilip- so kaya Pilipinas, parang mas masarap mag-trade ng mga basura. Eh, diba? <laughs> Kasi ka- when it moves in the Philippines, you can cover your transaction costs. Okay? I'm not encouraging, I'm not pushing you to, to trade mga 90 degree companies. I'm just saying na, na it would be relatively easier to cover your transaction costs if you're trading momentum and pullbacks in in in, in the Philippines tapos uh, basura. Okay? So one example in the US, it's uh, GameStop. Are you familiar with GameStop? So you can, can anyone give a background on GameStop? Like a quick background lang naman. Just so for those people who don't who are not familiar with GameStop. Sir. Go. It's a retail company that sells video games. And then um, because of the shift to online, uh, they've been losing market share and their earnings have been steadily declining. But then some people found out that the it is overly shorted. So a lot of their shares outstanding were short already were already being um short worth already short so the people from wall street bets uh started to short squeeze the hedge funds who were short gamestop yeah very good who's ryan cohen you know ryan cohen you know that guy um no sir. sorry <laughs> so He's the founder of uh, Yung Chewy. Yung Chewy kasi ano yan eh, uh, parang online uh, pet supply store. So he has experience in, in online retail. No, so back last, uh, last year, early, yeah, early last year, started buying up shares of GME. No? So, at that time pa lang, ha? at that time pa lang, wala, wala pang $10 yung, yung, yung GameStop. Eh. There have been speculation la, da, na that he would eventually take over of game, GameStop. No? So, even at that time, the clues were already there. Yes, also the chairman. Ngayon, chairman na siya of GME. But back then, Wala pa naman eh. He was just buying up shares. And slowly, 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 uh, started, uh, yun nga, kumuha na siya ng director uh, seats. Right? And then, yun, yun na yun nangyari. So, I guess, ang, ang, um, the real, there was a fundamental change na in the company, even back then. No? Even though the numbers hadn't reflected yet, may fundamental change na nangyayari. No? The shift towards online retail, yung GameStop, could be in the works na back then. No? It just so happened that the short interest at that time was more than 100%. So sabi nga ni Marco. No? So when Wall Street Bets found out about this, they started pushing up the stock. No? And that created a domino effect. I think nakwento na ni Boss yung Volkswagen, no? Tama ba? Yung, yung marami nag, yung may nagpakamatay, yung short seller. No? So, a similar thing happened here. No? Wala naman namatay yata. Well, none that I'm aware of, no? <laughs> sa, sa GME. But very similar, no? Um, if you're a purely numbers-driven uh, person, and you don't really understand the narrative or what's happening behind the scenes. Diba? And you short this, patay ka talaga. <laughs> yeah? So, uh, that's also the reason why you shouldn't just rely on numbers. Okay? You should also understand the narrative behind it. Because the narrative, the narrative is usually ahead. Okay? So, sinabi nga ni um, Pierre, no? chairman na siya ngayon. But back then, you can already add that to your narrative. Eh. 
na okay, Ryan Cohen is, is accumulating shares of GME. Uh, maybe, tapos sinabi pa niya na parang nostalgic sa kanya yung GME at that time. Eh. So, at that time, parang gusto niya talaga i-turn around. So, it's more of a nagiging project na sa kanya back then. No? So, you can already, back then, parang nandun na yung pieces. Eh. So, remember my first slide about the puzzle? No, you, you, you're already starting to see the pieces forming together. No, so it's only a matter of do you wait for it to have a complete picture, or uh, even without it being um, completed yet, kaya mo na mag-trigger. Diba? Kasi right now, chairman na siya. Yun na yung picture. Eh. Titrigger mo pa ba ngayon yan? Would you still trigger? The narrative is already almost complete. Probably not anymore. But back then, my speculation and nangyayari, right? And you know, you know that there's a there's a big probability of it happening. You should already be triggering it back then. No, sorry to manalang pag sumabog. Nasakyan mo all the way to to dito, ba? But of course, that's hindsight, and there's really no way of of doing that. But there were already clues back then. Right? You, meron ng uh, kaya mo na magform ng thesis back then. Okay? Actually, one of our traders really pushed for this back then. No? Also, my, my teammate. No? Um, was already pushing for this back then. Okay? Uh, so maybe I lingered on that too long. Next. Okay. Well, one of our favorite companies. No? Uh, ASEN. Sino yung may gusto ng ASEN? Si Adrian, was that you? Yeah, that was you. Um, so, do you do you agree na it it uh it was a 90 degree company before? Yeah. No. <laughs> yes. Why? I think it was a scene in the chart. Yeah, parang before it became parang before it trended up 90 degrees. It was just around parang four, four, three, ganun. and then it went as high as at its peak, mga 10. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And back then kasi, well, this is really a unique story, no? Yung ASN. Kasi uh, last year, two years in the making siya, no? Before it was FEN, FEN FINMA. Diba? Tapos naging ASEF, correct? So, back then, wala, wala talaga siya. May, sure, may konting asset siya. Diba? But you don't really know what Ayala would do to it. Diba? You don't know what, what they would inject. Would they inject the whole AC energy? Would they inject just the Philippine business? Ngayon, syempre clear na eh, diba? But back then, hindi mo naman alam eh. Diba? You're not even sure if they're going to include the international operations of ASEN. Diba? So, but it's very unique in the sense that it, it was already an Ayala company. Diba? Kaya, kaya gustong, gusto to, gustong gusto ko to last year pa lang. Eh. Kasi, I mean, if, if you know the Ayalas, you know that they can, parang, parang may Midas touch yung mga Ayalas. Eh. Whatever they touch turn, turns into gold. <laughs> diba? <laughs> lahat yan. Lahat. Uh, sobrang konti lang yung, yung mistakes nila. So even if it was a 90 degree company back then, in my head, Eventually, 60, 60 degrees or 45 even. Diba? So, but these gems are very rare. Na, no? But again, if you, if you know, if you already know what you're looking for and you've had enough experience, if you, you've studied uh, similar cases before, you would know that the potential upside, even back then when the narrative or the numbers weren't there yet, kaya mo na execute eh. Diba? Kasi if you're looking for certainty, diba? pag gusto mo, 100 sigurista nga. Diba? You're not, you're not, you don't like, sorry, you're not, you're, you don't like gambling. Diba? Kasi if you don't have 100% uh, information nga, more or less you're gambling. Eh. You, you don't, you're taking a bet. You don't know what's gonna happen yet. Diba? If yun hinihintay mo, ngayon ka palang bibili, medyo maliit na upside mo. Okay pa rin, di ba? I mean, still, very good, right? But the jackpot, wala na. 
Okay? So, ito, uh, ito yung mga possible entry points na to. Can, can anyone annotate? Ano ba yung mga potential? Can anyone annotate? Ano yung potential entry points nito? Ni ka guess lang. O, oh, idea ni ikaw na lang since ikaw yung You uh, can annotate I'd... ba? Ah, yeah. Sige, annotate mo. Ano yung mga potential the whole the whole picture. Ah. Where can you where do you think you can enter? I'd say around around 7 to 6.5. It's possible to accumulate here. Ah, ibang strategy yan. <laughs> <laughs> Investing yeah. strategy yan. Ay, yeah. Uh, well, wearing a, a trader cap, a trader hat, where would you enter? Uh, trader. Okay, so I would say if it pulls back, so wearing a trader hat right now, I would say if it pulls back around mga, yeah, around I'd say this either eight or maybe somewhere here. So, anong anong setup to? Hmm. Pull back. Reset, ba? Ah, reset. Long consolidation pattern at least four months, right? That's already a reset. And you're if you're wearing the trader hat. You should be entering at the break of mga seven, uh, ayan, mga seven around seven point five. Diba? Kasi, oh, okay, guys. Um, one, ang the good thing about the community is that there are so many uh, views, de ba? Uh, you can so there are there are many people who are more experienced than you that you can bounce ideas off. That you can learn from, but you also need to um, you also need to uh, what do you call this to filter the ideas, no? Because you don't know whether what anong hat yung suot ng tao yan. Let's say you're talking to boss, diba? You're talking to boss. Sorry to make you an example, boss. <laughs> you're talking to boss. He wears a lot of hats. Because lahat kaya niyang itrade na. Eh. From investing to EIP to trading to to momentum trading, so sometimes this is also what I've learned then over time over my past 12 years. The first thing I need to know is what hat boss is wearing when he's speaking to me. Is he wearing uh, an investor hat or is he wearing a, a trader hat? Because if if you don't know what what hat he's wearing, mo confused ka. Also, when we talk to each other, about or or when when I'm discussing, you know, you, you have to filter it out. Pardon. What what hat am I wearing? Because <laughs> Adrian is now that's a valid that's a valid strategy if you're investing. But if you're trading, pwede ka hindi mo naman alam kailan break out yun talaga. Eh. If you're a trader, you want to make sure that uh, yung again the probability of making money at in the short term. Right, it's already high, diba? So, if you're trading resets, that point na yung probability mo it's already high is when it has broken out already. Okay, and again, it's a reset, no? It's a reset, so that means it has to be four months. The declines getting smaller, right? So your probability mo when those um, factors are present already, mataas na. So you're just waiting for that signal. Okay? Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Pag nahihiya pa kayo, mamaya na lang tanong a question tayo. Na. Question and answer. So back then, uh, so yung mga potential setups, ang dami rin eh. No, yung ng 90 degree company pa siya. Right? May mga blue sky breakout, may actually quite unique to eh, no. Again, it it was a 90 degree company but it was an Ayala company na rin at that time. 
So kahit mga coil, kahit yung mga consolidation, typically pag pag 90 degrees parang matatakot ka na eh. Di ba? But dahil Ayala company siya, you have to make an exception. Di ba? So even even this, that was a valid entry point. Di ba? Mga momentum trades here. So another insight from this is if you know the company inside and out, if you know the prospects of the company, you can trade any setup. Di ba? You just have to wait for it. Parang alam mo na yung company eh. So sinasabi ni, you weren't here yet, but Marco was um, sharing his his top pick, yung PERC in the US. Ako unang tingin ko, sa ko, ano ba ito? Illiquid. Ang, ang, hindi ko yung matitrade. Di ba? But his mind is already there. You know? Activated. Hinihintay na lang na magka-setup. And because you know the company inside and out, you know the prospects, you know the catalyst, all you have to do is wait for the setup. Any setup. Ayan. Diba? You know what, what to expect from it? Reset, pullback, momentum, madali na lahat yan. Diba? So that's, that's one insight there that um, later on I'll be sharing more of then. No? In, in my own experiences in the past. No? Okay. Sorry, fundamentals pa lang pala yun. Okay, so technicals. What are the most important elements of technicals? Or what, ano yung mga important, at least what you can take away from in technicals? Technicals, buy and sell signals. Diba? And setups. Right? At the most basic, yan na kailangan mo. Okay? Kasi right now, you're beginning, if you're going to overwhelm yourself, you're not going to focus on a few, hindi ka rin, maka, hindi ka rin makagalaw eh. Diba? I mean, if you're looking at Elliott waves or you're looking at um, ano pa ba yung mga technical, mga clouds, uh, Fibonacci, all of those are can be used. right? But if you're beginning, you don't really need them yet. At the most basic, you only need these. And to tell you the truth, you can make money off of it already. Okay? So yung mga, yung mga sinasabi namin ngayon, sinasabi ko ngayon, Yan pa lang kaya mo nakumita ng pera. You don't need a lot. Di ba? You have to keep it simple nga eh. Uh, I remember being asked questions before or even during the our panel interview. You know, what indicators we use or what indicators they use. Di ba? Or is this relevant or not? You don't need a lot of indicators. Di ba? Kasi pag marami kang indicators, one, um, Ano yun? Analysis paralysis. Diba? Hinihintay mo lahat. No, wala pa to, wala pa to. Sige. Or like, ano ba meaning nito? Ayun, may nagtanong yata yung mga conflicting signals. I think it was Erika yata. Tinanong niya si one of the mentors. What if there are conflicting signals? Diba? So if you look at a lot of indicators... Sometimes not even relevant. Lahat talaga may conflicting signals yan. So baka hindi ka pa mag-execute. Right? On the opposite end naman, another another pitfall if, of having uh, looking at too many indicators is confirmation bias. Diba? You look at, you find, you look for that indicator that fits what you want to happen. Oh, oh ito maganda. Diba? Sige, titrade. Or pag ito, ito conflicting, maghahanap ako ng, ng maganda. Diba? So, yan ang confirmation. So, you want to avoid that as well. So, as much as possible, you want to limit yourself selves in the, for in a few indicators. No? Okay. So, when you're looking at duration patterns, no, duration patterns, yan. So, coils, resets. When you're looking at coils, it has to be greater than the 50-day EMA. So, ito I'm sure na kwento ni Rome. When you're looking at resets, it has to be above the 200 EMA. Anything below that, hands off ka na. No, kasi hindi na yan uptrend. Or at least, wala nang, maliit na yung chance na kumita ng pera. Okay? Uh, your MACD should be near zero. Sometimes even below zero pa, but near zero. You, you can see that in resets eh. Diba? I mean, long consolidation patterns, 
yung MACD mo, halos nasa below zero na yan eh. But that's okay. No? But this is also important, no? The golden cross. So, the 50-day EMA should be above the 200-day EMA. Okay? Because that indicates that the primary trend is up. So, long-term trend niya up siya. Okay? So, this is, that's the primary, um, what do you call this? Uh, Indicate indication of a golden cross. No, long term primary trend uptrend siya. Okay? In magnitude setups, so nakwento na rin to ni Rome, your pullbacks, 10 day, 20 day EMAs, your blue sky breakouts, sometimes above 10, also above 20 day. But the important thing here when you're in magnitude is your ADX. Okay? If your ADX isn't 30, above 30, medyo deceiving yan. Kala mo, momentum na siya. No? Pag yung ADX mo below 30, tas parang may setup na momentum or pullback, yung probability of making money mo medyo maliit na rin. No? Bababa. Hindi man maliit, pero bababa. Diba? Kasi ADX, that indicates that someone is accumulating heavily. Someone or funds or the whole market is accumulating heavily. There's accumulation there. Diba? Nagmamadali. So, yung probability of making money mo mataas versus an ADX that's below 30, parang, okay, I'm taking my time. I'm not going to accumulate as much. Diba? Parang, yun yung, yun yung in-indicate nun. So, as much as possible, you focus, when you're trading magnitude setups, you really focus on those that are greater than 30. Okay? There are just some exceptions. Yung mga kaka-breakout lang from consolidation. Okay? When when the stock has just broken out of a coil or a reset, typically your ADX di pa rin 30. Eh. Okay? So, pag ganun, exception yan. But if it's already trending, mata may, may trending na, nag-breakout na, it has to be 30. Okay? Sige, we'll try to look for examples later on. No? Kasi kala ko in-depth na yung discussion dito. For for your uh, boomers and slingshots, so boomers, yun yung medyo malayo na from uh, the duration patterns. Yung slingshots, ito yung sinasabi ko na uh, fresh from a breakout of a duration pattern or major duration pattern tas nagsiset up na momentum those are your slingshots. So yung mga slingshots na yan, typically your ADX, baka hindi pa 30. No? So that's the only exception in these magnitude setups. No? Also, volume. I haven't discussed volume pala. Yung volume, also a additional complementary indicator. So if volume is huge when the stock breaks out, and when, when the stock is in momentum, that's also good. Uh, meaning may nag-accumulate nga. Versus a breakout that's just the volume isn't. Parang, okay, so probably the question is, what do you what do you mean by volume is high? Diba? Relative to the past month or so. So pag biglang may spike in volume, diba? a, comp a company diyan ng breakout, the probability of it going higher is good. Okay? But if there's a breakout and then the volume is quite low, meaning relative to the past month or the past two weeks even, medyo iffy yun. Diba? Okay? Okay. So again, uh, I'll just go through a few examples. So this is a reset, obviously, you know, what, what I've mentioned. Um, so what you want is your volatility to die down at least and mga four months of consolidation sideways pattern, right? But your buying point, your exact buying point is here. At the break of that, diagonal resistance line. 
or even the 50-day EMA. This is the 50-day EMA. Okay? That's your trigger. Right? Um, I can't show too many examples, no? Kasi you only have 50 minutes left, no? But there are cases na um, di talaga siya exact, eh. When you buy these, these resets, um, minsan hindi pa ganun kaganda yung presyo. Diba? Or di mo alam talaga saan ipipeg. Right? But the fact that uh, it has already consolidated for four months, lumiit na yung declines niya, diba? late na yung ranges niya. Even if your exact, exact buying, even if your buying point isn't that precise, minsan may konting Baka hindi ka pa agad. But these elements are already there. Your probability of making money, mataas na. Okay? Yeah, yan ang difficult sa resets, eh, di ba? Kasi resets, uh, parang magulo nga yung pattern, di ba? Malaki, magulo. Di ba? So, yun. Um, as long as one, uh, there's a clear pivot point meaning kaya mo na mag-draw ng resistance line to um, four months, at least four months of consolidation. Three, your declines are getting smaller, volatility contraction. Okay na yan. Mataas na yung probability of making money mo. Okay? Pag-reset at least, no? Okay. So, ang exit niyan yan. Okay. Next, flat coils, No? Flat coils, again, has to be above the 50-day EMA. Um, this is... Oh, what type of pattern is this? It's a flat coil, but what type of pattern is this? Can anyone answer? Sir, it looks like an ascending triangle. Yes, correct. Perfect. That's a ascending triangle. But not all patterns are this clear, no? But <laughs> this is just the perfect... Perfect flat coil talaga. No? So, ang probability, obviously, umakit, pero hindsight, di ba? But, sobrang ganda niya. Why? One, clear breakout. Clear yung, yung trigger mo. Two, may contraction, no? Your declines are getting smaller, meaning, meaning the buyer is more aggressive than the seller. Di ba? So, this is the perfect, the perfect coil talaga. Diba? Linis talaga. Yun yung sinasabing malinis. Diba? Okay. Yung mga charts pala to, we're assuming pasok yung expectations natin, ha? Sa fundamentals. Meaning, this is, at, this is, uh, hindi siya speculative, no? At least a 60 degree company. Okay? So, assume that lang. Okay. So, you buy the breakout, then, okay. Uh, Sorry if I'm skipping. Huh? So, if you were listening in the panel interview, no, I mentioned that the buying is a, is a science, selling is an art. Remember that, no? So, buying can be really, you can be really precise when you're buying, no? But selling, medyo mahirap eh. Ito rin yung, uh, yung sinasabi ko na um, you need to experiment a bit, diba? Um, when you're experimenting, you experiment within the same type of system. So this is obviously a position, uh, position system. Eh. You're buying coils, right? So what you can experiment on is that. No? So based on my numbers, uh, based on my previous trades, saan ba ako mataas ang uh, reward ko? No? Uh, so do I sell at the break of a 20-day EMA, at the break of a 50-day EMA. Diba? So, yan, dyan na gagali, dyan na pupunta yung mga experimentation. No? You don't experiment with, okay, I'm going to buy mga duration setups, no? position setups, so mga coils lang, resets. Then a few days later, okay, I'm gonna do momentum. Ayan yung gusto natin iwasan. No? That's a blatant style drift. Now, what what you want to do is you want to focus on one one type. So, for example, uh, duration setups lang. No? So, position setups. Right? And then you experiment with 
either the entry, but primarily the, the exit points. No? Okay, so dun, 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 dun dapat yung experimentation in the beginning. So it's still within the same system. You don't want to linger out no? and try out different systems. Okay? Falling coil, again, malinis din to. No? In a falling coil, it's still, it's still above um, it's still above the 50 DMA, right? But you see parang uh, mas aggressive yung seller. No? But may breakout. No? So yung trigger mo talaga dito is the break of the resistance line. No? Okay. So, I think the common mis misconception is mukha tong descending triangle, di ba? Di ba? Mukha siyang descending triangle. But descending triangles are really uh, more relevant in downtrends, not in uptrends. Okay? So, this is clearly still above the 50-day MA. This is clearly still trending, uptrending. So, yung di talaga siya descending triangle. Right? It's a descending tri descending triangles are continuation patterns. Okay? So, meaning, pag downtrend siya, talaga relevant. No? Okay. So, ang trigger point mo dito is your the break of the resistance line. Right? And then you exit there. No? But again, you need to experiment to the exits. No? But at most, at most for me, 20 day. Okay? At most 10. Alright, next. So momentum patterns, um, CGC. Sino may alam na CGC? CGC is a uh, marijuana ano, diba? producer in, in Canada, Canopy. So, natutuwa si Kobe, baka gusto ni Kobe mga marijuana, mga pot stocks, you know? <laughs> Okay, so, pot stock siya. So, during, uh, yan, mga 2017, 2018, no? sobrang relevant sila. So, ang daming speculation that um, marijuana will be, would be legalized in the US, right? So, even though at this price, parang sinasabi na cornered na niyong buong US market. Alaks pa rin ang inakit. No? So yan, um, wala pang nangyayari, wala pa talagang legislation at the time. No? May clues lang, yung momentum traded. Okay. Uh, wait lang ha. Clear. Alright. So yan. Okay. So you notice yung volume malakas oh. Although yung Okay, ang maganda rin sa momentum. All right? You know that this is a consolidation pattern. But is it executable or not? Kaya ba ma-execute yan? Is there a clear buy signal there? Yes or no? No. It's not executable. Yes, it's a consolidation pattern. But not it's not executable. Okay? So, at that time, yung odds mo of making money, mataas or mababa? Sobrang baba. You don't know what's gonna happen. Eh. You, don't know, you don't know what's gonna happen. Right? But, the advantage of momentum trading is you don't have to languish here. You don't have to waste your time here. Okay? You just wait for it to break out. The setup na lang. Diba? But at this time, at this time, may clues na na potentially uh, this would be in play. Right? So legalization, diba? they're investing in new uh, manufacturing uh, uh, capabilities. Diba? So, nandun yung hype. Diba? Sinasabi, gold yung green gold. Diba? So, may hype na. May clues na that, that the 
this would break out. No? So if you've been following this stock for the longest time, you know that it's a 90 degree company, right? You've been following it. You just wait for the setup. You just wait for the setup. Okay? Yeah. Back B. This is quite recent. Kagabi yata gumalaw na eh, no? Uh, so mga pullback, so pretty straightforward, uh, 10 and 20 EMAs, no? Sige. All right. Any questions so far? Kaya nyo to. Magaling na kayo. Any questions? Nicole, are you okay? Yeah. Gets? Gets naman so far? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, again, ask your coaches, please. Um, if you have any clarifications, uh, if you need any clarifications, no? Okay. So, moving on to sentiment. So, I won't, again, I'm no expert in sentiment. I'm no expert in macroeconomics. No, I understand. I understand it. But it's Jason's arena. No, so I don't. I don't need to look at the whole. Don't need to um, really analyze everything about sentiment. I need to understand it. Okay, but I need to rely on Jason to tell me. Ano ba tingin mo? Ano na ba tingin niya? Diba? So um, just have to be efficient. Then eh? you have to work work smart as well. Diba? Play to your strengths. What are you good at? Diba? Um, and you just focus on that. Diba? And you find people that complement your strengths. Diba? Of, of course, it's a give and take. Diba? So whatever you can put on the table, you also have to share. Okay? Yeah. And so in sentiment, you just really have to know if it's a risk on or risk off environment. Right? And my cheating pa yan eh. Diba? So as long as um, you know, as long as the applicable index or benchmark is above the 50-day EMA or ideally the 20-day EMA, risk on environment yun. Diba? Okay. So when you say risk on, meaning yan, your appetite for risk is very high. Eh, diba? And this only happens if the big players, the big funds, are making money. Diba? So that's the logic behind looking at the index. Or looking at, for example, the PSEI. Diba? If you're looking at the PSEI, you're looking at the SPX, you're looking at the NASDAQ, and it's in a strong uptrend. It's above the 20 or the 50-day EMA. How are those big players feeling? How are those big players feeling? They're feeling great. Diba? They're making money. Okay, I will speculate a bit. Since I make I made money in Ayala, I made money in Microsoft, I made money in Google, I made money in Tencent. I double my money or like uh, 20, 30 percent. Okay, I will allocate one percent of my money in a speculative asset. Money to lose, eh? Because house house money, yan eh. diba? So kaya if kaya yun yung logic of looking at the index as an indicator as well. Okay, but if it's below the 50-day EMA, if below, if it's below the 50-day EMA, that's major. If you paying macroeconomic backdrop, mo, major risk off yan. Oh, risk off talaga yan. I mean, if you're again put your, yourselves in the shoes of those big players, because they they're the ones that are driving the market. Eh. Diba? Apart from the Fed, the big funds are also driving the markets. So put yourselves in those in those people's shoes. Diba? So if if my core positions, so assuming index, diba? if your index is breaking down, is in a downtrend, tingin nyo ba may gana kayo mag-speculate sa ibang assets? Yes or no? No. Diba? Why would I speculate on other assets? I will just look at my, my core positions. Talo na nga ako sa Apple ko, talo na ako sa Ayala ko, video ko. Ba't pa ako magsispeculate sa mga GME? Ba't pa ako magsispeculate sa mga 
uh, ano pa ba yung mga speculative in the Philippines ever. Diba? So if if the big guys, the big funds are not making money, your probability of your of making money in the speculative assets in your aggressive growth companies automatically become smaller. Okay? So if you want your odds of making money to be high, only trade heavily when it's a risk on environment. Okay? Mer pang isa eh, yung neglect in sideways. So below 50 and but above 200. So yan yung neglect. So ito medyo this is a good period then to um, be sure risk off totally, but this is a good period to to really analyze or take note of those companies that are still doing well, that are still holding, diba? those aggressive growth companies that that are still holding. So you sabi ko, your Roku, diba? that's, that's a way of really putting aside those companies and waiting for the signal for the breakout. Okay, so itong time na to, yung neglect phase, right? So not entirely risk off, but not risk on. That's the time to really uh, build your watch lists. Okay, so the past few months, my team and I, that's what we've been doing. Okay, so we've just been looking, oh, ano ba yung okay pa, magandang, magandang prospects na company, right? Um, are still are they still holding? Their technical still look good? Still above the 50 day EMA or 200 day EMA? Diba? Because once the market turns, you have to be there. You have to have a working list already. So the past two days, nakasakay kami. The past week, nakasakay kami. We were able to take advantage. Because we already have that list during the time when the market was going sideways. Okay. So just to give you an example, no? Itong, um, this is a very good example. This was uh, Shanghai, the Shanghai market uh, back in, ba to? Yeah, 2006 to 2009. No? So prior to, oh yeah. prior to the Great Recession, the US, grabbing run up nyan. Diba? Kasi yung China rin at that time, they were investing heavily in, in infrastructure, diba? in construction, in trains. So lahat yan, grabe investment in properties. Diba? So yung speculation going on at that time was really, really, really high. Okay? So obviously talagang risk on environment yan. Even big picture. There's... there's uh, you're looking at the big picture lang. We're looking at the big picture. So grabe, risk, risk on talaga yan. Diba? But when reality had set in, diba? biglang puro uh, ghost towns pala, diba? they over-invested, right? Wala, patay sila. Diba? So during this time, downtrend talaga yan, not even above, I can't show you the, the EMAs obviously, but Trust me, they're they're below the 50-day EMA. Risk of environment talaga yan, right? So you really stay away. Okay, and then, yan na. Uh, from after that, yung sobrang sumuka na lahat, nagkapitulate na lahat. Ironically, at the bottom, like yung mga sumusuka dyan, the most negative news or developments really come out at the bottom. So malamang dito, sinasabi na yan na, yun na, sobrang daming ghost towns, uh, yung GDP nagsuslow, I mean still probably 8% at the time, but slowing down. Diba? But at that time, doon ay umakit yung market. Okay? Who can give me a similar example today na Parang nandito. Parang nandiyan ngayon. You can give me an example. Yes. <laughs> Bitcoin and crypto in general, no? Kasi ang daming speculation na nangyari, di ba? 
But now, you know, reality is setting in. Diba? Lumalabas na yung mga environmental concerns. China banning cryptocurrencies. Diba? But in my opinion, in my opinion, back then kasi a whole cycle, ang tagal eh. Diba? Three to five years, even ten years. But now cycles are shorter. Right? So I don't think it will take two years for crypto to reach this level. Baka less than a year pa eh. Diba? So you have to be aware of that then that the cycles today are getting shorter then. Okay? Wala naman sa inyong nasunog sa crypto, no? <laughs> okay. Moving on. Oh, sige, questions on sentiment. Any questions? I'll try my best to answer. Ah, kasi, again, it's not, it's not my cup of tea. Any questions? None so far. Okay, good. So, another thing with sentiment. No? Ito, more on the micro level. Um, Na-discuss ba sa inyo yung relative strength and relative weakness? Yes? Oh, sorry. So let me just let me just um, briefly discuss this now, because it's it's very difficult to quantify it. Eh? So when the whole index, when the Nasdaq or the PSEI, right? Uh, Nasdaq na lang, malakas, uptrending, de ba? Nag break out, and you see your stock not moving. Relative weakness. Diba? Ang lakas ng market, mahina yung stock mo. That's relative weakness. That's a bad sign. Okay? Um, on the opposite end, let's say pabagsak yung market, but your stocks are, are holding relative strength, that's a good sign. Okay? So at that time, um, so I guess the, the a good example was uh, so 2020, diba, March. Um, yeah, let me let me try to show you. Um, wait lang ah. I think it's an important point. Eh. Okay, so let's say SPX. Can you see my screen? Uh, okay, good. 2020. Okay. Obviously, bagsak, di ba? That was Feb to March. Deads. Let's look at Zoom. What happened to Zoom? Nung March pa lang. Of course, don't look at this. Ha? But nung March pa lang, Hindi siya namatay. It actually went up. Pa. So, these are good signs. Diba? Ibig sabihin yan that people are willing to ignore the negative news, the negative macroeconomic backdrop, and buy this company. Well, at that time, obvious naman, diba? Zoom would, would, take, would, would be able to take advantage. Diba? But, Yung mga ganyan, clear signs yan na may upside pa siya. Diba? So you have to be aware of that. You know? I, I think this is part of sentiment din. Eh. Diba? When it's a um, when it's a risk of environment wait lang. Okay, when it's a risk of environment and you see stocks outperforming, that could be the next leaders. Okay, so take note of that. Huh? So every time there's a crash, every time there's a sell-off, risk of environment, you list those companies that are outperforming. Ibig sabi niyan, may big probability that in the next run up of the market, pag nag risk on the environment, those companies would outperform even more. 
Okay? Good. Um, I guess this is just a homework for you guys if you want to do it. No? Um, so take a look. The past three months, ano yung mga companies, ano yung mga aggressive growth companies that outperformed, that didn't fall as much? And check nyo kung anong nangyari after. Okay? Okay. Now, on, in risk management, si Bry um, presented a lot of concepts eh, and they're all very good. No, But the most important, at least for me, itong dalawa. So just portfolio and trade management. When you say portfolio management, it's just pyramiding. Eh. Diba? When the market is overbought, you lower your size. When the market is oversold, you increase your size. Okay. And then trade management, I guess this is what I want to focus on more. No? Um, so for each one, you price and trail stops. That's really just based on technical analysis. Um, this is the experimentation that you can use, uh, that you can, um, where you can experiment, sorry. So sa mukha ba lalaging stops ko? Am I going to put it to the 10 EMA or the 20 EMA when I'm momentum trading or when I'm position trading? Okay. Or do I trail it based on actual price? About the previous pivot points. Okay. Ito time stops. So this is more, um, this is, I guess, experience driven din eh. Okay. Because time stops, time stops, wala pa sa cut mo, magkakat ka na. Okay, so nagiging art siya, no? So as you gain more experience, as you gain, as you do more reps in your trading, you will realize or you will parang malalaman niyo na okay, my stock isn't moving correctly, my position isn't moving correctly. I haven't made money in it. I should be making money already. I should cut it already. Diba? So, yun ang time stop. Meaning, kahit wala pa siya, cut mo talaga. Kakat mo na. So, this has saved me a lot of money in my whole career na. No? Kunyari, bili ako ng coil. Tagal, tagal talaga. Hindi pa, parang nagsustol lang siya. So, even before it's not at my cut, I've learned to do a time stop. Diba? Diba? And several times yan na, yun nga, ang tagal, hindi nagbe-breakout, yun pala nagde-distribute yung insider. Okay? Yan ang time stop. Uh, next is VAR. So, natuto na, na, turo na rin sa inyo to, no? So, it's just position sizing based on your maximum allowable loss. Okay? So, I'll show you an example later. Then profit targets, um, multiples of R or resistance zones. Okay, so let me just use the the reset that that I showed you earlier on. Okay, so you buy the breakout, so that's your buying area. When I say, I say buying area, because it's very difficult to be precise, talaga, when it's a reset. Um, I put my initial stop. At the low of the pattern. Okay. So those are my potential profit zones. And that's my final trailing stop. Okay. So let me just show you why yan yung mga sinabi ko. No? Okay. So again, it's a reset. Four month con consolidation. Volatility contraction. Okay. My clear um, resistance line. So, ang odds of making money ko, mataas na. Okay? Why did I put my initial stop here? Because that's the support of the pattern. Why is my initial profit taking zone here? Because this is already 1R. This area. Meaning nun, na-cover ko na yung VAR ko. Yung risk ko. Okay? 
this is R from breakout point to the initial price top. So that's your R. Once makover yan, pwede na mag-sell half. Okay? At least ako. But some people would probably do 2R. So depende yan. Ayan yung pwede nyo pag-experiment. No? Okay. Another I will probably sell near this level because resistance. Diba? You can probably sell all already. Depends on your system. Okay, so that's what you can experiment on. But as long as you know the basics, right? The guidelines, you know that this is resistance. You know that the probability of it breaking out coming from this point to that point, medyo mababa. Okay, so you just adjust your plan accordingly. Most would probably sell everything here. Okay, but if you really love the company, if you know a lot more than most people, baka pwedeng i-trail mo pa further. Meaning you want another indicator to stop you out. Okay, so you could sell everything here at the break of the 20-day unit. Okay, the most important thing here is it should all be in your plan. Okay? It should all be in your plan. Don't do something freestyle. Meaning, if you don't plan to, if you plan to take profit there, and there's nothing has changed, meaning walang bago, walang bagong catalyst, walang bagong development, you should be taking profit there. Bahala na pag umakyat hindsight na yan. And just learn from it. Okay? It has to be part of your plan. Also, um, yung, yung cutting should also be part of your plan. Of course, this went up, no? But what if it broke down? Right? Of course, that could happen. Even if I would just peg a 50% chance of making money in this. No? But out of 10 times na ganito yung setup, 50% you make money. In, in those cases, you can manage your profits well and you cut at your cut points, you will make money. Okay, net-net, you will make money. Okay, so if it's... Ang importante doon is you're consistent in your planning. No? So, okay, if it's your part of your plan and nag-breach na siya ng initial stop mo, you should be cutting. Don't change your plan. Ah, okay, sige, dito na ako. Oh, sige, long-term investor na ako. Okay, so dyan, dyan na naruruin yung mga traders. Okay, so that really separates those good traders from the bad ones. Okay, your ability to follow your plan and to cut your losses. Okay? Yeah. Taking too much time here. Okay, so... Your question pala. Go, go, go. Yes, please. Um, would you, ano, kapag kuyari, you sell it at the resistance, di ba? Pag nakita mo nag-breakout talaga, would you buy it back? I just, no. <laughs> depende, depende on the type of system you have, eh, uh, Erica. Um, if you're a more sophisticated trader na, no, you have, mas may experience ka na, you just wait for the setup. Diba? Any type of setup. But if you're focusing uh, on, let's say, position trading, you're trading moderation patterns, no? Like this one. I, I assume kasi duration pattern, eh, no? So position trading tayo. You don't buy on the breakout here. You wait for the setup to happen again. A, an applicable setup. So ang, ang set, anong duration setups, Erica? Uh, coil reset. Yes. So you wait for a coil. Diba? Um, if you're a more sophisticated trader already, meaning you have, you've had more experience, you're like boss, you know, you've had more, uh, you've been in a company for 20 years in CTS, you can buy it here. 
tayo mabilin dyan. So, but that's style drifting na. No? Style drifting, if you're new, that's that's a, ano, <laughs> uh, sure, sure, makonfuse ka, matatalo ka lang. And you might give up. And you don't want to give up early. Right? You have to be in the game long enough for you to really get it. So don't don't style drift in the beginning. No, eventually you have to learn everything. No, because whatever so whatever the sentiment may be, whatever quadrant we are in, whatever company you're trading, you can take advantage of. Right? But that's the goal. That's the end goal. Uh, but starting out, I don't know, Erica, how, how long have you been trading? Uh, uh, high school. <laughs> high school? How old are you now? I'm 22. So, okay ka naman. Are you oh, having like, profitable? Okay naman. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Took a few but, years, but yeah. <laughs> why do you still need us? <laughs> yeah, joke lang. Um, baka dapat ikaw na yung nagtuturo dito. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm sure you're better. <laughs> Pero yun lang, kasi minsan parang naaano ako, like, Parang kaya sinel ko sa resistance, tas akit pa, tas parang naiinis ako. That's FOMO. Fear of missing out. Okay? There's FOMO, there's fear of missing out pag wala, ka sa, pla- pag wala sa plano mo. Pero, but that's fine. That's fine. The only thing you can do is learn from it. Diba? What could I have done better in a different scenario? Diba? Yan din importante, may mentor ka. No? That's, I guess that's also the reason why you're here, no? So you can you can you can consult us or what? No? Um, because if I didn't tell you, baka gagawin mo. <laughs> so I guess that's that's important thing there, no? Um, so just make sure na although you've had more experience, na so baka dapat okay lang. But I have to see. Yeah, if you're if if I'm your mentor, I have to see your numbers. I have to see how you've been trading, right? So I can't. Exactly say no then agad no. So I have to um, look at your your previous trades then. No, but um, the assumption is halos zero to one year of trading, no prior experience in this type of setups. You have to be selling there. No? Hindsight na yan. No, but so part of plan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks, sir. No problem. Okay, so it's 11.48 na pala. I didn't notice. Okay, so ito. Just an example. I'm sure you know this already. Um, so how much bar you want to put in? You want to put 1%, for example. So that's $1,000 divided by your buying point minus your initial stop. Again, that's your R. Okay? And So that should be part of your plan. Okay, sige, moving on. No? Kasi wala natin oras. Kutom na rin ako. Um, all we've done so far, the past few months, is to help you mentally prepare yourselves for the opportunities that will come your way. No? Um, with enough mental preparation, you'd be able to figure or like kahit approximate the probability of you making money. Right? And if you put in the work, you put in the due diligence, you think you, will, you wouldn't make money? You would make money. Because those people who really put in the work who are always prepared for any scenario, luck goes into your favor. Right? Luck, yeah, luck. Okay, but is it really luck? Yeah, in, in hindsight, you might think, oh, we got lucky, right? Maybe maybe you've been you've been trading uh, GME, you know, you've been following GME for the longest time. You know the clues that uh, lumalabas na. Well, Ryan Cohen is there. You know Wall Street bets it's starting to come out. Yeah, you know that it's already reversing, and then the move to four hundred happens. You make both loads of money. Do you think that's just luck? Not. Uh, I, I beg to disagree no more. No? Kasi you've already put in the work. No? 
you were just able to take advantage of the situation. Okay, so another thing that's P or another um, tip that I can give you is you should utilize visualization techniques and scenario analysis. What do, I, what do I mean by visualization techniques? So you have a plan, right? You have a plan, you've done your work, you visualize it in your head prior to the market open. Okay? So most athletes, the elite athletes, use this technique, right? So Michael Phelps, Michael Jordan, probably Kobe as well. But in their sleep, in imagine nila yung scenarios. Eh. Ni imagine nila what could happen. What, how they would how they would dominate the other competition. Diba? You should already be you should try to visualize what could happen. Okay. Um, I saw Peter doing this in one of his uh, lectures. Now. So this is good. You draw out your expectations for your potential trades. All right. So even kahit so Marco, for example, you have a you have your your perk. Okay, you have to imagine what could happen already. So when it happens, you don't you don't think anymore. You just execute. Okay, because when the opportunity is finally there, you need to be able to act without hesitation. And that the same goes with cutting. Okay, you might think na. React, baka reactive, eh, Parang nag react lang ba? No, you've already played it out in your head. You put the due diligence. You have to trigger. Diba? So, like I said earlier on at the start of my presentation, like I said, good gamblers are the easiest to train as traders. You know why? Because they won't hesitate. They will put in the bet. And then they, you just need to learn from your mistakes. Right? You learn from mistake, and then later on, as you gain more experience, a lot of experience, a lot of reps, you learn to trust your gut. So parang minsan reactive ka na, but no, it's not reactive. That's years of training your mind and your eyes to spot opportunities. You're just executing. You're just reacting now. Okay? Um, so that's, I guess, if if there's something you would, you take away from me today, it's that. Okay? So you cannot hesitate when the opportunity is there already. You have to put in that bet. No, kaya nga, yung sinasabi ni, uh, well, wala pa pala kayo, no? I asked, well, what's your next step after this? What's your next step after this uh, modules and sessions? You'll do paper trading. So I go, huh? Why are you going to do paper trading? You have to feel it. You have to, you have to be be able to be trading real money. Well, of course, not a lot of money, but you have to be able to trade a bit of money as well. Okay? Because if it's paper trading, you don't really feel what's happening. Well, parang, ano lang, parang naglalaro, computer game lang, for example. Diba? But when you're, for example, in um, in wars, diba? Di mo naman, diba? Kailangan maramdaman mo rin talagang real action. Okay, so without feeling the pain, without feeling the losses and the gains, the highs and the lows, without feeling your emotions, may harapan ka rin in the long run. Okay, so if you're doing paper trading now for the competition after five weeks, um, I also suggest that you do it on the side, you trade on the side, you trade with your own money or you trade with your parents' money. <laughs> okay, just make sure not to lose them all. But, or if you're going to lose some, Make sure na hindi hindi kayo mabab bankrupt or something. No? But you need to be able to feel to feel it. Okay, um, I'm not sure if you have enough time, pa. But maybe I'll just go. Dapat kayo papagawa ko nito, But maybe I should do it na lang. So how do I do it? Uh, so of course I know PSEI. You know that's most of you know then familiar with it. So that's an advantage too. Um. So what are my expectations for the PSEI? Right? I know that uh, the expected earnings for next year, it's around 450 earnings per share. So at current levels, probably no, 15 times lang yan, diba? but yung index. Ha? But then you have to consider that most of the index components or the market valuation of the PSEI is dominated by four players. 
BDO, Ayala, SM, SMPH. Right? So maraming mura sa index. So even if at current level, 2022 times forward PE, 15 siya, marami pa rin mura dyan. No? So I think that, given that, I think we have more upside. I think this just needs to consolidate. All right? And then this will creep up higher. This will go up higher. But I also know that the PSEI is composed of mostly stalwarts. Mostly composed of 45 degree companies. So I don't think that even if we're cheap at 15 times forward PE and kahit target natin, sabihin natin 18 or 17 times, which is probably 8,000 plus, I don't think it will go up to that level right away. I think that it will go up in a step ladder uh, manner. Okay? So this is me drawing out my expectations. Now, what if, what could make it break down? Okay, so I also think of that. What, what would make it break down here? Obviously, the rise in cases. Again, something that's not expected. Let's say my third, fourth, fifth uh, wave that that cannot be covered by the current vaccines. Oh, siyempre, patay yan. Diba? Or let's say there's a coup d'etat or something. So you have to be, be preparing for those contingencies as well. So that's that's how I plan it out in my head at least. No? So when that scenario happens, whether kahit na it's just 1% chance or 0.1% happening, I know how to react. I will no longer hesitate. So pag lumabas yung news na yan, I will cut. I will no longer hesitate. Diba? Okay, so any expectations go sa PSE. How about Okay, in other well, sorry, ginawa ko kasi to prior to the breakout of Tesla. But okay. So Tesla coming from a 90 degree, 60 to 90 degree move company siya noon eh. All right? Hard to quantify kasi Tesla. <laughs> Hard to really determine, but I would somewhere in between this. No? Earnings, but I mean, top line growing. Nakakaroon uh, na ng earnings, but not that big. Right? You have Elon Musk there uh, tweeting every so often. Naging Bitcoin played in siya for a while. But now, reality is setting in. No? So, ang expectation ko dito, moving forward, I think this will be a 45 to 60 degree company na. No? So I think, well, nag-breakout na siya. No? So my team was able to get it. Dahil mentally prepared kami. This is a reset. Mentally prepared kami to buy at that level. Okay? But what are my expectations for this company? Again, if it's a 45, 45 to 60 degree company, my technicals should also be aligned with that. So I think that it will move in a stepladder fashion as well. Right? So I will not buy it. Let's say, mag-break out to dito, tas mag-pause days. Sorry, pangatong drawing ko. I will not buy it there. I will buy it if breaks out, you'd expect resistance there. You expect it to go sideways here, consolidate the, their supply here. That's probably the next setup you'll be looking for. Okay, then again, resistance dito, you also expect it to hesitate here. All right? If that doesn't happen, like since I've been Erica, let's say, nag break out yan, diba? How bullying ko ba yan? Of course not. Because it's not aligned with my expectations. I will wait for the next consolidation. Bahala na yung FOMO. Marami naman companies eh. Okay? Next. Uh, SE, Shopee, everyone's favorite. No? Um, when I look at it, um, when I look at Shopee, nauna siya sa index eh. Kaya ito yung sinasabi ko na nag-sell off yung market, but this is relative strength. Nag nauna pa siya sa index. 
Joke, nandiyan na pa rin pala yung index. So, at par lang pala. Okay. So, pag ganyan, what do I expect in Shopee? Ano? So, it's already um, 100 plus billion na ba to? It's already a big company. Right? And moving forward, high base siya eh. Kasi during the pandemic, everyone was online shopping. Diba? And this is in the Philippines. Uh, Southeast Asia siya nagdo-dominate. Eh, diba? Pero may gare na rin siya. May online gaming din siya. Diba? But moving forward, although you don't expect those who uh, had gotten or have gotten used to uh, online retail to completely go back to brick and mortar. No? So you don't expect from maybe 60 degrees, you don't expect it to be as strong anymore. Diba? Kasi high base siya eh. So my expectation dito, 45 degrees na lang siya. Okay, so kung mag, mag momentum yan, I will not buy it. I will wait for either consolidations or at most, baka kung, kung 50 day to, 50 day pullback or ranges, saan ko na siya bibili. Okay? So you should you should get to do into this habit of of drawing out your expectations as well. Okay? Next. Ever basura, di ba? Uh, speculation that one of the big retailers would would take it over. All right? But when this sell off happens, wala na yan. Huhulihin ka na yan. Every, every time may setup, huhulihin ka na yan. No? When this happens, big sell-off, it's done. Kahit ano pang lumabas na news dyan, bibentahan ka na lang yan. Diba? Although, I'm just saying this with 80% probability. Yeah. <laughs> so, pwede rin naman siguro, but since I'm playing with probabilities, based on my experience, based on my studies, this will not go up higher again. Kung mag-consolidate man yan, mag-distribute na sa'yo yan. Tapos pababa na, pababa na, pababa na naman yan. Okay? So that's my at the most likely scenario for me. What could change my mind? But what's the 20% probability in my opinion this, this could go higher? Okay? What nga ba? Maybe if um, yun, may confirmation that, uh, that that SM would buy it, right? Like parang parang nangyari sa ASIN, they will inject their malls in ever. Diba? But I don't think that it would go up the same manner anymore. So even if that happens, probably consolidation lang siya, then slow mover pa tayo. This, I don't think this would happen again. Okay? Next. What's next? Oh, Ethereum. Okay, so cryptocurrency. So, so what my, what's my expectation? So crypto, ito yung kanina, diba? yung, yung bull bear. This is your bullish left. And as a right side of the chart na siya. Diba? So expect weakness. Diba? Weakness, weakness. Or probably hype dito lang. But also, like I said earlier on, cycles are much shorter now. I would argue that case uses of Ethereum moving forward, like yung pinag-uusapan namin ni, uh, ba yun? ni Abe, na potentially mag maka disruption in the future. So I would think that this would just go to neglect rather than all the way down. Okay, neglect, then you'll see a more stepladder fashion. Okay. okay, what would make me change my scenario? Let's say talagang mamatay yun dyan. Let's say, uh, kasi there's this event that's going to happen that would make Ethereum mining more... Um, Benef parang less deadly to the environment that will happen soon no if that doesn't happen 
your proof of staking, if that doesn't happen, then this could happen. Okay? But I'm mentally preparing myself for the possibility. So, okay, next. What's next? Uh, Disney. Oh, dali na Disney. So Disney, I think, obviously, 45 degree company, stable despite the pandemic. Why did expect it to go down? There may Disney Plus naman siya. But uh, moving forward, yung key sa kanin, reopening, eh, diba? the Disney cruises, the theme parks, diba? even the cinemas. So I would think that this would break out eventually. Diba? Lalo na pag mag-open na yung mga theme parks niya all over the world. Diba? But again, since this is a 45 degree company, I would only execute it pag may consolidation patterns or pag yan, mga ganyan, diba? mga pullbacks. Okay. Next. Okay. Sige. Um, let me just share some of my best and worst trades now over the past 10 years. I, I only have a few that I'll be sharing. Um, supposed to uh, ask you eh, kung ano yung what what could be the reasons why these were my best or worst trades? But I'll just share it na lang quickly because it's already 12.06. Now, why were these my best trades? So PXP, um, at that time, no, uh, at the breakout, nagkakaroon na na rumors that um, China would, or uh, Duterte would uh, lift the the force majeure in, 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 in um, PXP. No, yung yung SC seventy two nila in the in the um, West Philippine Sea, no, and my talks with with the uh, <clears throat> with China, right? But well, nothing confirmed yet. But that's the perfect time to momentum trade it, right? Ngayon na parang mas may clarity na, de ba? Ngayon may clarity na. Eh. Ano nangyari sa kanya? Patay na siya, de ba? But ironically, during this time, dun siya tradable. Okay, so this was my best trade because, again, I was, even before here, months prior, inaabangan ko na yun. So when the break, when the setup occurred, I was ready to execute. I was able to hold it all the, hindi ko nahawakan all the way to 10. Mga 6 plus. Okay, so I was able to trail it well. Um, when this happened, nag overshoot sa to 10 syempre may regrets pero okay lang because that wasn't part of my plan anymore okay next so yung ASEN pretty straightforward na kwento ko na kanina no? I was able to trade it several times I wasn't able to make money from 3.5 to 5.5 but so that's okay worst trades okay ito early early in my career okay um, 2013 I remember uh 20, 20, started trading for CTS sa Philippines. Nag-trade ako 2009, Hong Kong. No? But tried, started trading Philippines mga 2011, 2012. And from 2011 to 2013, I hadn't, wala akong down month at all. Mayroon ako mga like, down con, ay, up konti, up, ano, pero wala akong down month. Then this happened. So, nag, siyempre, nag-superstar mentality ako, di ba? Parang, oh, I can, kaya ko naman tumita kahit ang mangyari, di ba? And this happened. No, so, TFHI, if you don't know, that's the holding company of uh, SMC. Okay, so back then, magulo pa actually, may, may, may accounting mumbo-jumbo silang ginawa, wherein TFHI held shares of SMC, but SMC also held shares of TFHI. So magulo, di ba? Parang why is, why is the, the subsidiary holding shares of the mother company? Weird, di ba? So ang ginawa nila, spinning off nila yung TFHI. So hiwalay na siya. Okay? So at that time, like, oh, ang laki ng potent value kasi at this price, yung SMC is 80 rand. No, if, well, you have to compute then, eh, kasi oh, ilan percent you're holding niya ng SMC, ano yung effective value niya, target niya. No, so, nag-compute, compute ako, so I go, it doesn't make sense. That has to be at least, yan, mga 100 plus to 200. So, syempre, nung down tick, bumili na ako. <laughs> so, I lost like 300,000 pesos in one day dito. So, at the time, I remember, I, nakausap ko si Lawrence, eh. 
So sabi, sabi ko kay Lawrence, Lawrence, I needed this. So parang reality check sa amin. Sabi niya sa akin, ah, oh, yes, you needed that, but we didn't need that. <laughs> okay, so, well, wh- why was it my worst trade at the time? One, there was no setup. Yes, there was value. I knew that uh, sobrang mura siya, even uh, at the current price of SMG. But wala pa eh. Price didn't confirm it. There was no setup at all. Zero setup. And I had put in more uh, risk than I should have. Okay? So at that at that time, dapat yung risk ko, 100,000 lang talo ko. Pero naging 300,000. Diba? So one of my worst trades. Okay? And you learn from these trades. Over time, you would probably make the same mistake again. But like I said in the panel interview, those mistakes become more, uh, become less, and you probably be out much faster. But they're recurring, diba? Okay. Next, another worst trade. Uh, so, ito yung nakwento ko during the interview now. So, this 682 Chow the Modern. So, this was an agricultural company. No? Um, pero, at the time, I, I didn't really check the company. I didn't check its prospects. Hindi ko alam na na, <clears throat> na lo- accounting uh, mambo-jumbo lang yung ginawa nila. So, earning care, earnings nila maganda. So, ang ginawa ko, nag-all-in ako dito. Nag-all-in ako dyan. Near 5.5. Then the next day, down tick the next day, swine flu. Tapos sinabi, placement. So, nasuspend siya for a couple of weeks. Then when it opened, down 20 plus percent na ako. All in ako niyan. Ngayon ang kuneta ko na I went to Boston, tinawaan na nangyay ako. Okay. <laughs> so, yan. Um, so, why was it my worst trade? One, I didn't study the company. I didn't study what it does. Alam ko lang what it did. Alam ko lang before na uh, agricultural company siya, but I didn't know. I didn't really dig deeper. I didn't even ask my peers. Number two, that isn't even a setup. Resistance nga yan eh. Diba? That's the 200 DMA. That's the resistance. But, so I shouldn't be being, I shouldn't be in this stock, you know. Um, anyway, right? That's not moment. That's not trend trading. Number two, number three. I was all in. Right? Hindi wala kong sizing na maayos. Okay. So, um, one thing when you're reviewing your trades. So this was this is my last slide. I mean, pa pala. Okay, but maybe I'll end there. I'll say one more, one more, one more. Here. Also in 2009, uh, new B trader ako, no? So I bought here uh, the break. All in then, siyempre. All in then. Then the next day, placement. Okay? So the next day, nag-cut naman ako. Problema, dito, sinasalo ko siya. Sinasalo ko siya 275, cut by, cut by, cut by, cut by. All the way to 2.25. Okay, say ko, mura to, mura to, mura to. Ilan dito gumagawa nun? Ayun. Or, na, or naka-experience na nun? Yung kala nyo, sige, buy, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. Kasi ayaw nyo patalo. I, saw, I see some smiling faces. No? So, I'm, I'm sure ginawa nyo na to. Uh, so, ayan. Overtrading. Wala lang ang setup. You know, overtrade ko pa. No? Okay, the first setup here. Mali ba yan, tamo? It's a proper setup. Okay lang. Diba? Hindsight tong gap down eh. Hindi naman alam mo mag gap down. Diba? Pangalawa, pero mali ako dahil malaki size ko. Okay? Number two, dapat siguro nag-scratch na rin ako kasi hindi naman tumuloy eh. Okay? Ito, mali talaga. Kasi wala naman setup eh. I was just trading it dahil ayoko magpatalo. Gusto ko siya bawiin agad. Okay? Yun. So, 
just some final ano na, ano, before we we open the floor for questions when you're reviewing your trades be careful of um what what you call resulting anyone here familiar with the term resulting focusing more on the result rather than the process that's resulting so in sinasabi ko kanina dito no um sinasabi ko dito okay setup okay lang naman yung setup eh diba? that's a valid setup pull back pero nag gap down dahil natalo ako resulting pag sabihin ko ah mali that's wrong Okay lang yun. Right? Let's, let's say ito. Let's say, <clears throat> here, binili ko. Diba? Ano lang, hypothetically speaking, binili ko dito. No setup. Diba? No setup. Tapos nangyari ito. You gain 20%, 20 to 30% in two weeks. Sabi mo, ah, tama to. That's resulting. Okay? You need to be able to separate the result from the decision. Okay? And one way of helping you out is you know, relying on your mentors, on your peers. You have to have accountability. You have, they have to be able to tell you and you have to be open, open it up, open enough to receive criticism. Or you could have done this better. Because if you're just doing it by yourself, lalo ngayon hirap, eh, diba? Wala. You will just probably half the time magre-resulting ka lang. Wala. Okay, maybe I should end there. Um, so again, um, thank you, no? Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to to us the past uh, month or so. Um, I know everything's compressed. Uh, Kailum usually takes much longer and takes the whole day, no? But uh, I've seen I've seen your um. The way you answer questions and the way you ask questions, very good. No, um, I see potential here. Uh, <clears throat> but like I said, um, you're very smart people. No, no, no doubt about that. But you should be able to execute as well. So in trading, um, your intelligence, your IQ, high IQ, doesn't really matter. No, well, it matters, but only up to a certain extent. So don't. Don't um, make that a hindrance to you. you know, so um, try to be humble. You know, I, I, all of you are smart. Try to be humble. Um, don't. Ong yun na hintayin na yung yung market yung mag <laughs> yung mag ano sa inyo uh, magpa humble. No. <laughs> so yun. Um, I look forward to seeing you more. No, in, in your uh, presentations in the coming weeks. So, and We'll see kung meron sa inyong makapasok no sa CTS. Then the fun really begins. No? <laughs> okay, sige. Questions if you have. Guys, go ahead. Ask your questions. In case you guys didn't know, I didn't mention sa intro kanina. Si Chad is a multi-time trader of the year. Sobrang dami na. I don't even know how many times he's won it. <laughs> You know, man. <laughs> Everybody's a live stream. Last few days to answer. Uh, to ask. Marco, go ahead. Sir, I have a question. Let's say you're investing. What do you think about trading around your position? Like your invested position? Like, let's say you're buying, uh, like we talked about a while ago, I think. Was BDO. So let's say you have an intrinsic value of BDO, but BDO is still at the bottom and major malaki yung margin of safety. What do you think of trading around your investment? Um, <clears throat> well, I alluded to this earlier on. No? You, first of all, you need to know your strengths. No? You need to know where you're good at. Um, second, you need to be able to uh, settle on, on what you want to be talaga. Do you want to be a trader? Do you want to be an investor? Uh, if you're at boss's level already, meaning you have had like 50 years of experience or something like that, 
uh, maybe you can wear multiple hats. You can compartmentalize. But if you're a new trader, a new investor, that's very difficult to do. But if you really want to venture into that uh, super uh, difficult path, I suggest um, creating two separate accounts. One is for trading, one is for investing. But don't uh, <clears throat> don't trade with your own, with the same investment account because that will be really confusing, right? And psychologically, your average price will affect you, right? Because if you're trading around a position, so you buy at the <clears throat> at EIP, ka, for example, you've been um, dollar or peso cost averaging for the past few months, right? And then, so mamura ka. And then, bibili ka sa breakout, bibili ka sa pullback, yung mura mo, magmamahal. And that would affect your decision making. You would probably get shaken out several times. So, I suggest you do separate accounts. So, um, the, that, that, the, it won't mess with your psyche. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, go, Harold. Harold, go ahead. So, hi, sir. My question is about yung sa fundamentals. So, yung mm -hmm. 90, 45, and 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. So, is there a more concrete way to determine which is which talaga? So, parang I noticed kanina, there are some companies na medyo hindi clear yung distinction between the borders. Like, for example, si Netflix, I think it was Marco and yep. Tristan, di ba? Parang nag-argue sila both. So, in a sense, it's a bit subjective, but talaga, or is there a more? Um, oh, well, sila Nell uh, did a pretty good job. No? Sila, sila Tim in explaining. Um, in terms of clear delineation, it's very difficult. Um, there are some companies that are clear. Diba Microsoft, clear, malaki, diba? very stable, clear. Then Apple, clear, ayala, diba? but. Yung mga trans yung mahirap is the transitional. Like like I said, Netflix, diba? But um ang maganda dito is you in order to uh, in increase the odds of being correct. Yun nga, you have to discuss. Kaya nagtatanong ako kanina, oh, so does anyone disagree with me? Or does anyone disagree with ano, diba? Kasi 45 and 60 are both tingin ko okay. But if you say 90 degrees, uh, wala, mali talaga yan, di ba? So, may mga clear, wala talagang clear delineation between the two. But at least, like I said, di ba? It, the, the puzzle doesn't have to be complete. Right? You don't, you don't have to have complete information. Because if you have complete information, you wouldn't be able to act. Di ba? If you, okay, parang kailangan ito para 45 degrees. Oh, kailangan ito 60 degrees. Eh, di ba? But if somehow you know that you're in that spectrum. That's enough for me. Diba? Okay na yun to set expectation. Okay, sige. Since it's a 45 to 60 degree company, not sure yet kung ano talaga siya o baka transitioning siya. Maybe the setups that I'll be looking for uh, since parang nandun siya sa spectrum na yun will be geared towards more uh, coils. Diba? Yan. Versus a, let's say, uh, try to rin expand ko na rin yung question. No? Let's say a 60 to 90 degree company. Diba? Let's say a 90 degree company transitioning to a 60 degree company. Diba? Parang hindi pa ako sure but maybe based on uh, peer review, usap-usap kayo. Diba? Parang sige, ganito, ganito, ganito. Um, so baka ako, even though it's transitioning to a 60 degree company, I'll probably be, be trading it in momentum as well. Okay pa rin. Diba? Whereas a 60 degree company transitioning to a 45 degree company, baka hindi na ako mag-momentum. So that's, that's how I, that's how I, I think lang. No? I, I, there's no way of um, having complete information in, in stocks. No? So you, you always play in the gray area na, you know? but you would know kasi you're a gambler. <laughs> okay. Any, anyone else? Thank you. Sorry. Wait lang. Um, Chad, we have a question from the Facebook stream. Okay. Miguel wants to know what do you what do you do after market hours to make yourself a better trader? After hours, um, all the work happens after hours. 
before and after hours. Um, well, yung, yung, based on how I presented today, that's basically my process. Eh. That's how I filter stuff. No, although in a very basic level. No? So that's how I do it. Um, so in the end, I said na yung mga visualization, scenario analysis, um, drawing out my expectations. I do that a lot. And it has helped me a lot as well. No? Um, kasi in the, in, in, when the market opens, all bets are off. Na, di ba? Meaning, kahit ano pwede na mangyari, ang bilis, ang bilis gumalaw. Sometimes just a few seconds of hesitation could be could cause you a payday, a huge payday. Now let's say my GME or mga ASIN or whatever. Diba? Pag, pag nag break out yan, you hesitate. Just a few seconds, a few minutes. Nasa radar mo na siya pero hindi mo pinindot. Wala na. Diba? So that's the importance of like really mentally preparing yourself to, to just execute. No, uh, apart from that, of course, um, in review, no, uh, reviewing with your, with your peers, with your colleagues. So I'm very, very, um, very fortunate to be, to be in a in this CTS community, you know. And we also have a team. I have my team that we bounce ideas uh, of each other. Um, whenever we we made a mistake or do something stupid, everything is disclosed. No, wala na hiyan. Kasi <clears throat> ang problem kasi if you're if you're new nga coming from like, like kaya nga sabi ko medyo disadvantage pa if you're coming from a good school eh. Kasi parang pride mo mataas. Ang mangyayari if pride mo mataas, ayaw mo mag-disclose ng talo. Di ba? Or or you wanna win all the time. And that's those are big hindrances in trading, no? So um having that peer group, having that group helps balances out those things out accountability eh, diba? Karang, okay no room for pride because you have to do this or like diba? if you're doing it by yourself wala, get up, no? so yun, um, peer review after accountability partners uh, groups uh, what else um, <clears throat> um, that's really it eh. I mean yun. I think that that really answers the question Go, Alvin. Yeah, I'll ask you a question. Um, how do you know if it's the system that's wrong? The style isn't simply for you, like maybe bounce or momentum? Or is it because of the execution or the market in general? Well, first of all, if you don't follow your plan, you're wrong. You know, number one. Number two, there, I think I answered this in, in our session. Already, no? There are blatant errors talaga. No, like oversizing or like uh, ano pa ba? Um, trading on no setups. Diba? Those are blatant errors. No, but um, how do you know when you made a mistake? It's really sometimes after the fact when you reflect na talaga, you know. When it, it um, so yeah, when you review your plan and how you executed, and if there's a mismatch, yun. Um, there are some People, all of us have blind spots. Eh, no? So I have to reiterate that you need someone to, to tell you rin. Na, okay, parang mali ka dito, Alvin. Mali ka dito, Chad. No? And then, yun, conversation. That starts a conversation. Uh, baka nga, no? Or like, no, this is part of my plan. Maybe uh, but maybe I should make an adjustment on this front. No? Um, Alvin, it, it takes a lot of reps din eh. No? So like, uh, at, at least a quarter now of, of, of really trading one system you know, before you really know whether it's for you or not. Uh, and not sure if it, yun nga, yung di ako fan kasi talaga ng paper trading. Kasi if you're paper trading, hindi mo rin malalaman eh. It's not complete information eh. Kasi paper trading, you remove the emotions. It's like a, you're trading in a vacuum. Right? So when you're trading in a vacuum, not, hindi lahat ng factors in play eh. but when you're trading with real money diba, even your emotions are in play okay so sorry if i answered too long but yeah um another question sir so is there like a benchmark return um like trader, traders should make uh x percent within um say a month 
Kasi maybe like, yeah, you could be earning money nga, but then it's too li- little pala, like only 1% a month or something. So yeah, is there like a benchmark? If yeah. Um, it, it depends on how you make your, your plan. Kasi this is also business nga, eh, So you, you create targets for yourself as well. Um, if, if you wanna if you wanna peg, there are there are benchmarks uh, out there, you know. Of course, you want you want to be able to beat the index at least, because if you can't beat the index, why are you trading? You just put your money in mutual funds or something, or in the, in the index itself. So that at least you should beat. But um, if you're starting out, uh, that's a lofty goal already. So you shouldn't put too much expectations for for yourself, no. Kasi um, baka lalo ka pa ma- ma-discourage. Diba? Uh, ako, if you're starting out, ang expectation ko sa'yo to break even in a year. If you break even in the first few months, magaling ka na. No, si Paul nandyan. Si Paul, yung, yung last trader ng Kalum from the Kalum program, oh, break even again din. So magaling siya. Diba? So, kumikita na nga siya konti. So, that's good. So, yun, I mean, in terms of expectations, uh, again, for yourself, it has to be, ikaw yun, you, you plan out your, your business, diba? If in the company, expectations, break even. First few months. Okay? Okay, okay guys. Uh, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. I think we have to cut it na there. Medyo over na tayo. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. No, no worries. It's uh, no, no problem. So, Chad, thank you again so much for closing off the last teaching segment for this boot camp. Thank you again, everybody, for attending. If you guys have questions, please, please, please ask. It's your, especially everybody on the Facebook live stream. Last few days, make the most out of your time. Sulitan niya na. Ask your questions. Don't be shy. Everybody would love to help you. Um, also, for the interns, uh, just feel free to message your mentors. Uh, it was a lot of information from the last three weeks, so don't worry, naman. It's expected now if you guys don't understand everything or there's bits and pieces that you want to clarify with us. So for the Facebook group, tomorrow will be the official last day for the bootcamp, and I guarantee you guys won't want to miss it. We'll be playing games, handing out awards that we didn't announce, and we'll be giving cash prizes for those. Um, this will be at 10 a.m. tomorrow for the culminating event. For our final special Friday event, uh, we hope you all enjoy the boot camp we prepare this e- this year. Uh, stay safe, take care. We'll see you there. Uh, unfortunately, interns, hindi kayo kasala sa morning session sa afternoon na kayo. So yeah, that's all. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your lunch. We'll see you. Thank you, guys. See you. Bye.